Hey, so just checking in and letting y'all know that uh, today I was on somebody else's channel. So that's the recording that, I, uh, that I'm that i doing today. Uh, it lasted like an hour. So uh, there's going to be the full video on that channel. There's some disagreement. There's some uh, uh, accord. It was an interesting conversation, I think. But ultimately, um, the uh, the channel uh, is run by uh, ANCAPs. There's an ANCAP flag in the uh, upper right. And uh, they were interested in uh, my sort of uh, panarchist uh, perspective, especially since they could get something uh, more approaching leftism from me than a variety of other people. So, with that being said, I was on that channel, uh, and I'm going to post a clip right now, because it's a clip I think is important, and it's also sort of a teaser for what uh, the rest of it is, so that you can like go check out the video once it's public. I don't know where it's going to be posted, but I'll post a link in the description for when it is. Um, but uh, yeah, feel free to subscribe to that channel. Uh, if you want to see me back there, because they've had me on twice now, and uh, both times I've argued a bit. So uh, feel free, uh, and uh, there's there's lots more where that came from, lots more coming. And uh, with all that being said, uh, yeah, I'm going to be making more content tomorrow, and I'm going to be doing whatever I can to uh, earn the Patreon and Ko-fi subs, and uh, yeah, get the fuck out of my current living situation and uh, upgrade my life. But uh, the content is going to come regardless of whether or not that happens. So feel free to uh, check out the following clip about how school created the lockdown mentality and how we're all subject to an evil machine that is self-perpetuating. Because if, uh, if, if you've been feeling the same thing I've been feeling, this is going to resonate pretty strongly with you. So with all that being said, uh, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Share this with people you know. Uh, tag them, whoever. You know, we need as many eyes on stuff like this as possible. And there's going to be a lot more coming with that. So with that being said, uh, watch this clip and smash the fucking state. So it's just a revolving door of corporatism, but I don't know. I, I've debated, you know, maybe they're going to try this again and people are going to fall for this again. I'd particularly not like to go through this again, even though with the scary beer flu, nothing too bad happened to me. But after I got locked up, uh, I didn't necessarily follow the best health protocols. Maybe that's why I watch Liberty and Health. And I was at 29% body fat. Now I'm down to 20. I'm not really down for another lockdown, even though I don't think it would work. I think they might try it. Or they might use this for another purpose. Um, I just find this one interesting, and I kind of want to end the show on that note. Like, uh, it seems a revolving door of BS still keeps going on, even though people know it's a show. I think they're just kind of like, hey, they know it's a show, but we're going to keep pulling the strings. Well, you know, I'm in my workout tank top right now, um, mm -hmm. and, like, fucking... The, the primary thing that people need to know is that any sort of disease is going to be worse if you're not willing to live a healthy not life on a normal basis. Yep. Um, it's like neither uh, of these things, anything that can be vaccinated can be, get, be gotten natural immunity to uh, if you're willing to work for it. And most people aren't. Most people like... They they were already doing lockdown life before the lockdown started. They were already sedentary. They they loved DoorDash and Uber Eats. They mm -hmm. fucking like they they didn't go to a gym and like they didn't work out from home even if they didn't go to a gym. Um, they they didn't like go outside as much as they should. They would rather binge a TV show. Like the the, the standard American diet bringing them back to the grain trough for heavily subsidized grain. I wrote an article uh, for Agorist Nexus, uh, which we're coming out with a documentary soon. So keep oh, an eye sweet. out for the, uh, for the crowdfunding campaign about the, uh, the beer virus. Like essentially the whole thing of it is that the, uh, <laughs> the, the common person has been raised in this system. He's, one of the things I wanted to bring up from the last set of points was you want to talk um, why this is happening. It's because of the roots of the system. School. School. It, it's a Prussian system designed to 
teach indoctrination, teach informity, so that people are willing to run toward literal fucking gunfire for their government mm -hmm. and put their life at risk, put their, you know, friends and family's lives at risk uh, in the pursuit of, uh, like, do <laughs> going along to get it along, like not rocking the boat, not getting in trouble, uh, not getting referral, a suspension, an expulsion, uh, and, and, and like not just the negative reinforcements, but the literal Pavlovian aspect of it, of we're going to bang a bell and that'll tell you when you're allowed to get your sugary treats at break or when you're allowed to go get food or when you're allowed to go outside like a good little doggy. And they're, they're trained with this mentality. They, they get exhausted with carbs because that's what the school lunch system gives them. They get exhausted with PE from those carbs um, and then they're burnt out and this constant fatigue uh, comes with a conformity thing where bullies are un only a natural consequence of this because, like, of course they're going to have student conformity mechanisms along with teacher conformity mechanisms, which is why they will get you in trouble for fighting back. The whole thing is evil. The whole thing is wrong. Um, you know, and, and you're forced to be there or... Cop Mala is going to lock you up. So the whole fucking thing is designed to enforce conformity and get you thinking official sources are the only sources that I got to uh, put on my papers. So that's the only thing that's right. That's the only thing that's fair. Anybody else is just a whack job, wingnut conspiracy theorist. So we can reject everything they have to say. And then that attitude translates out into a situation like this where it's like well all these official sources that my teacher accepted that i learned to think were the only right way to think uh msnbc cnn fucking all these things are just like brought to you by pfizer and they're all like on the same fucking bullshit of like this is very dangerous to our democracy and like that's the loop it's a feedback loop and it creates a compliance structure to this system where people are doing what Ted K would call surrogate activities in order to maintain the machine while it builds their escape pods to space so that they can get the fuck out of here, or at least their bunkers so that they can survive the Georgia Guidestones, because they still want to do that. It's not like the rocks being gone doesn't mean they don't want to yeah. reduce the population to 500 well, million or yeah. less. Well, one point so made, um, the whole thing is like been... built for this indoctrination, for this control, and for this group isolation. And so that's that's the root of it, is that we need to get rid of that, or people are going to continue with this like lockdown hysteria and continue saying, well, hey, these official sources told me to hunker down and eat junk food, so I'll do that. Yeah, and, and well, you know what's funny about this whole monkeypox deal is that the uh, patent for the vaccine was literally um, applied for or completed, I want to say, um, I have it up here on Google, actually. Uh, September 24th of 2019. Hmm. Yeah, I imagine that. Mm -hmm. It's almost like a self-looking ice cream cone. Now, my <laughs> thing with this is that I don't know if they're really going to push for lockdowns or anything like that. Now, could they? Absolutely. But um, I, I feel like this isn't quite as tangible as COVID was because everybody had got COVID pretty quick. But um that being said, uh, I did see a video this morning of people lining up to go get their monkeypox vaccine. So yep. maybe, like, uh, maybe we are in for the still going. It's the merry-go-round still going. So mm -hmm. the hard part and, of this, I also have a problem. I also have a problem where I'm like, I'm, I talk to libertarians mostly, um, mostly ANCAPs, minarchists. Um, and then if I start going even outside, if you think of the political compass, even slightly outside of that, okay, there's classical liberals, maybe Republican, like libertarian Republicans, which they're, and then if I go outside that to the left, you know, I, I really enjoy talking to Jeremy here or people who say, okay, I'm a syndicalist, this, not Antifa, but actual people who are like, I'm on the left. I just don't agree. Okay, fine. Not everybody's going to agree with that capstan. But there are people out there who are still like, man, there, and there's a lot in big cities who are just like, man, follow the program. Keep mm -hmm. doing the same thing. Like what there are people who ask me like, oh, don't, you know, Kareem, CNN said, oh, my God, I, I, I don't watch them. I'll never watch them. So, well, so on the CNN note, 
anybody who watched the Joe Rogan uh, uh, Kuf co- coverage, like they should know by now that, that that CNN is a bunch of lying hacks. They made him bluer so that he would mm-hmm. appear more sick. They like wanted him gone, so they said that he took horse dewormer and a bunch of other people did too. That was a lie. That was straight up a lie. He didn't take horse dewormer. He took human pills for humans. Mm-hmm. So like the whole thing was designed to instate conformity and that's why it doesn't matter that cnn is a pack of lying hacks what mattered is that they were parroting the mainstream narrative so all of that combines with the fact that like you know uh, the thing is they don't need under the lockdown they don't need it because they already got what they wanted and the great reset um is here now and uh i wrote an article also for agris nexus like in January 2021, talking about the article that I wrote in January 20 or er, March 2020, had been proven completely true that they were planning on building a fucking biometric ID and banking system uh, where everything would be connected to a private uh, blockchain that only the government could see. And all of this would like <laughs> create a mass conformity culture. It's not that the uh, that that the big pharma garbage was like extremely um, exclusive in that regard. It's that it was part of a bigger plan, and it was way to muscle it through. Like they wanted everybody to say, "Ooh, give me contact free. Let's just go contact free. Everything will be fine as long as I don't have to touch anything." Now take away my cash so that I don't have to exchange it for anything and get all those germs on me. Scan my face and fuck my ass, Satan. Like, that's exactly what it is. Nice, uh... Well, can I ask you a question? Why Why exactly do you think that is? Why do they want this sort of um, underlying monetary sort of social ID, um, universal currency, whatever you want to call it, or, you know, the central government Central banking digital currency. Why do you think they want this? Like, what, what? Because then they won't need your permission. They won't have to answer questions like that. They won't. They they can drop the pretense of democracy and just move into the straight fascism they've been pushing since they helped the Nazis escape from Germany. Yep. Do you do you think they're expecting pushback, or do you think they're going to be able to easily get away with this? They're expecting pushback because they already read all the online chat rooms. They know who to go after. They're already starting to censor people. It doesn't like ultimately it's going to be a very hard fought battle. But, you know, uh, at least arming people with the information is good. Yeah. And the main reason why they would like this uh, central bank digital currency is because it's so much easier to deplatform and just completely deperson. Yeah. People. I mean, you look at somebody like uh, Ryan Dawson, who's been telling the truth about what's been going on over in the uh, Middle East for, you know, 10 plus years. Um, he's completely deparsoned. He can't get on PayPal. Um, he can't get on any of the main, you know, Twitter, Facebook, you name it. He cannot go there. Well, what happens when that finally crosses over into just all digital currency? Guess what? Now, if they want, they can completely pull the plug on you and you will have no way to buy or do anything until you're you're completely compliant with all their demands. And this goes back to, you know, basically ESG, right? Environmental social governance. Or they yeah. want to be able to have a score for every single individual. And if you do not meet this certain threshold, you will no longer be able to do what your, you know, what daily functions look like to you in 2022, let alone 2019. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, and also like, you know, I disagree with Ryan in some significant ways, but sure. what I can say is the trucker protest that got cut off. Exactly. The entire fucking country of Russia got cut off. Exactly. Like they can just shut off a country. They can shut off you. So that's my thing that I tell people is that they don't give a fuck about you. And it's not about freedom or safety or being there for the common person. It's about their bitch ass little program that they can't run without all these fucking moving parts. They can't beat you up themselves. So they control you this way. It's evil. And that's the reason they want it because this is the way people like that maintain control. They can't get it voluntarily. So they want to remove your ability to demand that they ask permission. 
See, this is sort of where I, I don't know, I disagree a little bit. I agree with you that they're obviously, um, they're going to try and take things by force. But but the government and a lot of these these sort of corporate globalist organizations that are attempting to, let's say, seize power, if that's how you want to put it, as soon as they see a little bit of pushback, they usually hop off for, for a second, right? With the lockdowns we saw in, in the UK, we saw in the United States, in certain states, right? As soon as they were getting an extraordinary amount of, of pushback on those lockdowns and, and on those policies and people started to protest and people started to riot. People started to talk to their, their politicians, constituents started to get mad. They would pull back. Right. And then after a while, once the storms calmed, once people forgot about it, once the protesting done, they incrementally sort of grow, go back. And I also think if it's like that famous quote, if, if all attempts to save ourselves was hopeless, there would be no need to have propaganda, there would be no need to censor, right? There's obviously a reason why they're censoring, right? Because all our, our all our attempts aren't futile. They they need to censor. They need to control the narrative so they can brainwash people and psychologically manipulate people into doing things they normally wouldn't had they have the information to make the free and honest choice. Now, obviously, there's people who who are low IQ, who who are dumb, and regardless of information, they're still going to make the same choice because they're stub stubborn, dumb, and politically ignorant for whatever reason they don't necessarily have to have a low iq but they just not make the right choice for whatever reason but most people genuinely have this perception of reality and think reality is one way when in reality it's a completely different way and they've been propaganded propagandized and, and manipulated so i think that a large portion of their control is entirely reliant upon how strong a narrative is on a particular given day and the way they keep that narrative is by buying off media companies, by having politicians to have these set sort of talking points and and, and buying off uh, working with corporations and, and, and advertisers and pharmaceutical companies. So I think, yes, it some some of the like, for instance, like Klaus Schwab is pretty ballsy. He, he'll say on camera and admit it that he's trying to infiltrate governments and that, that, that he's through the World Economic Forum trying to basically make policy globally by pushing certain political candidates in nation states. But a lot of the politicians and a lot of these other people aren't so blunt and have to manipulate you through sort of soft talk and softening the language and, and just lying in general. Mm -hmm. Or they're good Is that the final boss, and they're all the part of the same symptoms. Yeah. So like, let me be, so my, my take is obverse of yours. It has similar elements, but the opposite conclusion. Um, and I said this, uh, I've said this many times, but I tweeted this thing on September 5th last year. The problem is set points. There is a new baseline of control every moment, and sometimes they increase the control to intentionally insane levels. So people will cry out for the previous levels of control. The trick is to say no to all of their control except none of it. So that's 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 the way I feel about it, and it sort of like goes for Kareem's benefit, um, and I think people who know him know why, but uh, goes to the point of David Icke uh, with his problem, reaction, solution, Ordo Ab Chao model, where he talked about how the Freemasons, the 33rd degree Master Masons, would discuss how these things can be done by creating a problem, having a pre-manufactured uh, solution, so that when people react to it, they will call to you for a solution, and you can just say, yep, here, we got this. We got this thing for you. Now you can shut up and, and you know, not rebel. Y you know, it's sort of like that thing in V for Vendetta where the guy's like glowering in the in the camera. He's like, you have to remind them why they need us. That's it. That's mm -hmm. all it is. It's 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 not it's not that they have to have the soft guy for some people. It's that it's good cop, bad cop, but the both cops are on the same team for the same purpose. And they're getting their confession either way because interrogation isn't a way to get confessions. It doesn't work. It's basically torture and they can get somebody whittled down for so many hours that they'll just say like, hey, I'll tell you anything. Just let me out of here.